Oh, uh, well, we can just cut all this, right? Welcome back. I'm going to help you understand your ancestry breakdown. You'll get to see yours soon. It will look something like this. Let's talk about where these numbers come from. See, we've got this really big hat and we've got all these pieces of paper inside it with different ancestries written on them. We've got British in here, Yoruba, British, Italian, British, lots of British. I'm kidding. Here's what actually happens. There are people who live in these regions today. People who, like you, took a DNA test. These are people with documented ancestry in these regions for at least two generations. Now, do you remember the chromosomes mentioned in the previous video? There are patterns in these chromosomes that are unique to regional populations around the world. Here's how it works. Chromosomes are like little packets of DNA. And there are tiny little pieces of DNA called SNPs that vary from person to person. When I talk about genetic patterns unique to certain populations, I mean there are variations on these SNPs we see time and time again for certain groups of people. So where did your ancestry results come from? Remember the people I mentioned earlier, the ones with at least two generations of documented ancestry from a region. We compared your DNA to their DNA. We identified patterns in your chromosomes that matched up with patterns in their chromosomes. Patterns that are known to be connected to whichever region they're from. Some regions of the world, like Northwestern Europe, have so much genetic overlap that it's hard to distinguish individual countries from each other. People from multiple countries in the same region often have the same patterns. Because, like I mentioned in the previous video, DNA doesn't care about country borders. If you have German DNA, there's a good chance that you also have DNA from France and the British Isles as well, as people in those populations have been intermingling for thousands of years. The same is true for many regions around the world. The genetic differences between the populations of Belgium and France or Austria and Germany are so minimal that they're essentially indistinguishable. So when you look at your ancestry results, keep the histories of each region in mind when you try to wrap your mind around some surprises. If you have Italian ancestry, it stands to reason you also have Greek or Spanish ancestry you didn't know about. If you have Gujarati Indian ancestry, it's not unreasonable to expect ancestry from other populations in South Asia such as Bengali or Punjabi. Many East Asian ancestries like Japanese or Vietnamese likely have at least a small bit of Chinese ancestry. When you think about all the migrations in human history, whether for war or trade or colonization, or even to escape from plagues and famines, none of these surprises are really surprises at all. At CRI Genetics, our favourite thing about DNA testing is being reminded of this truth, that we're all unique individuals, but still have so much in common with every corner of the world. Well, I think that's about all for today, folks. Next time, we'll talk about your Ancestry Timeline Report, which helps you make even more sense of the surprises in your Ancestry results. See you then.